this trip out to the beehives is especially fun for me because my wife's joining me to do the camera work. She has said that she never wants to go out to the bees. She doesn't care. She doesn't want to be around them. But today she's going to sacrifice, <laughs> sacrifice to come out and uh, do the camera work because it is a special challenge to do the beekeeping and the camera at the same time. Are we going over the hill? No. <laughs> touching your face once we get settled. Okay, they can't they get anywhere near you right now. If she gets stung even once, this is probably a one-time deal. So I'm making sure she's all Definitely buckled up. Definitely a one-time deal. <laughs> And the bees are going to start coming around because we have this honey, these uh, frames that smell a lot like honey. Make sure we have our hive tool, our bee brush, and some extra towels just in case we need to replace the beetle towels. I've never used one, but I carry a queen trap, a queen clip just in case I ever lose one except for the one time I did lose a queen on the ground I forgot I had the clip in my pocket I'm gonna try something today I've heard that the nitrile or nitrile however it's pronounced gloves uh, the bees can't sting through it I don't know if these are the super duper special five mil gloves I didn't see that on the box but we're going to try it out. If I get a stinger through the gloves, we're going to take a break and put the leather gloves on. We need to expand the, uh, the space in the hive for the swarm. Right now they're in a five frame nuke and we're going to expand that. I'll show you how we're going to do it. I could just put those five frames in a 10 frame box. That's very typical, but there's also some uh, there's some experience from some beekeepers that says that they don't ever build on those outside frames and that's likely because of a temperature difference between the inside and the outside of the frames. So it's reported that they have more luck putting another five frame nuke on top, letting them build all ten frames and then moving them over. going to put this five frame nuke box on top of this one. This is the swarm that I captured uh, down at my neighbor's house a few days ago and they appear to be doing really well but I think that they're going to expand out of this box. They're going to need more space real soon. That's a good bunch of bees right there. So all we're going to do, we're going to try to keep, we're not going to uh, fiddle don't, around too much. They don't seem too aggressive. No, no, these are fine right now. We're going to put this frame on here, this, this, uh, this five frame box on top of here. We're going to give them some frames to work on. Some of these have a little bit of comb on them. Like there's a little bit of comb on this one, a little bit of drawn comb on this side. And this one has a, quite a bit of drawn comb on both sides. That's going to give them a little bit of a jump start. And there we go. Very, very minimal, not very intrusive. Because this box is a thinner wood than the top box, I am going to go, I am going to use this strap. I left it here just for this. Actually, I forgot to take it back last time. 
we're gonna wrap this box up and make sure it doesn't come open. And there you go, that'll be just enough to keep those together. No bees are getting out around the base of this. Both of those hives, even though they're slightly mismatched in dimensional dimension of the wood, they're going to be fine until I can get them in a full-size 10-frame hive. That's done. We're going to go ahead and peek in here just for curiosity. We can't hang around too long because it is getting hot, and we don't want to be out here getting heat stroke. This is the hive that I split and put a new queen in. We're just going to check to see how many hive beetles we're catching and to see just in general how those bees are doing. There's a few beetles. Actually, that's doing pretty well. A few beetles on that cloth right there. And they are building. Let's just take a look at one of these center frames. Beautiful. They're putting a lot of honey in that. Beautiful, building a lot of comb on that on that uh, plastic foundation. We're not going to mess around too much in here because all I needed to know was that they are okay. They're building. They're happy. The beetles are being caught. Perfect. Bees are being really good right now. I moved the frames that were in the other half of this split into this nuke box because they don't look like they're doing too well. They're just not thriving like the other hives. So I moved them down here hoping that they would enjoy the slightly uh, smaller quarters to be able to keep the beetles out a little easier and maybe they would pick up and do better. So let's see. Well, it looks like they're doing okay. Let's uh, pull one frame here. They do have lots of nectar going in there. Where's that, the nectar? The nectar is the liquid. Nectar turns... Oh, I see it. Back up. Nectar turns into honey when it's packed in the cells and it starts being evaporated by the bees. They'll flap their wings over it and evaporate that nectar out and it condenses down to what we call honey. Overall, this colony of bees has just struggled. Wow, they have comb hanging down. Yep, this is a medium frame that has been placed in a deep box and they're building off the bottom of it. So they made their own. They made their own. So you can see that there's larva. I'm trying to see if there's eggs. What I see baby larva. What's this one doing? Um, either tending, either packing pollen, eating pollen, uh, or nectar, or t tending to a baby. But because there's other nectar around it, I'm gonna guess that it's just one just popped his head out. Yeah? You saw one emerge? Yeah. No, like it got done feeding it and it popped its head out. Oh, okay. I do see lots of larvae, so the queen is doing her job. I see a lot of baby larvae. I can't very well see eggs. There's a lot of really tiny larvae, so that's a very good sign. They're hanging on for now, so we're just going to button it up. And we're going to go try to collect some honey. I'm getting boxes in position just to be ready for what we're getting ready to do. But I also brought the loppers out for some apiary maintenance. Right here, this tree has a lot of big thorns and I poke myself every time I walk by it. See those big thorns right there? This is spiny hackberry. 
We like to leave this spiny hackberry because it's very good for the bees and it provides these little fruit for the wildlife. But it does have a lot of thorns. Thus the name spiny hackberry. And here's a little wee satch down here. We can get it cut out. Another very thorny plant that we have to look out for. Again, very good for the bees. They love the pollen that comes off of it. One of the reasons we're working today to get this stuff done is because we just extracted honey. The extractor that I'm using is borrowed. Actually, I rent it from a friend. He purchased it, so I agreed to give him so much per day whenever I use it to help him cover the cost of buying the extractor. So we need to get as much done in as short a time as possible so we're not buying the extractor. And mama wants her kitchen back. And mama wants her kitchen back. This box, this medium frame here, has a lot of the frames that we just extracted. The honey came out of it, the comb is preserved. I'm gonna leave that down here and just cover it with this piece of cardboard so the bees aren't getting in it. I give just a little bit of puff at the entrance and a little puff under the hood. I don't wanna blow the smoke directly in there. I'm trying just to let it waft in I'm doing my best to learn how to smoke appropriately and respectfully for the bees. There's some beetles in here. I gotta get in here and squash a few. And that's why I have the towel traps, hopefully to get rid of beetles. It's an ongoing, ongoing chore. And you can see this towel has been chewed up pretty good by the bees. That should that should should be catching beetles. This one doesn't look like it did a whole lot. It did. It caught a few. There's a few a few live ones on there. I took a few frames already of honey out of this one, so we're gonna we're gonna see if maybe we can take a few more. I do have the queen excluder in this hive right here. Oh, more beetles. So there should be no queen in this top box. And the way I'm cleaning these off is just giving them a good shake at first. Okay, we're not gonna take that one in because there's a lot still uncapped. I thought it was more full. Let's check this other one. It's a little easier to move around when you take one frame out and put it to the side. And this one has still plenty of frames on the end or, or cells on the end that are still uncapped. So we're gonna leave this one in there as well. This one's almost full. All right, let's see what else they got. These next four are empty because I just put those in there a few days ago. Okay, again, still lots uncapped. So it looks like we're gonna leave this hive alone for now. We're just gonna put the lid back on and move on to the next one. Hive number five. Again, I'm gonna put a little smoke in the entrance. Is honey only in the top box? Well, there's honey down. See this one, the queen excluder is two boxes down. So I can look for honey in both of these, but mm -hmm. this one, it's up here. Before the end of the season, I intend to have that honey excluder, or the uh, queen excluder, I'm sorry, down here. Hmm. I put a, a, an extra box on this one a few days ago, so it's probably completely empty in the top. I might, I might just take it off. It depends on what I see. They're definitely not doing a whole lot up here. I might just swap this box actually for the one that I just brought out because that one has foundation and this one mostly does not. Let's just do that. Let's take this one off. Hmm. This one's kind of the same condition. There's a lot of open cells, lots of nectar, but the cat they're not it's not capped yet. Just put that one aside and see what else they got. There's quite a bit of honey, but again, still too many too many uncapped. If I can get four frames of honey out of this one, 
that would be really good and and then I would put that other box or maybe just leave that box off for now I don't know we'll see this one's pretty empty that's an empty frame I put in this one's really heavy yeah but still see there's a lot not capped mm -hmm. So far, they haven't been on my hands. Haven't we? Haven't tested the the theory on the nitro gloves yet. Oh, that one almost did. Okay, this one I think we can take in. Darker. It's darker and it's full. So I'm gonna. Shake it off, which there's not enough bees really to shake. Kind of like Taylor Swift. Yeah. Shake it off. And brush this off. attempt to put this in this box with no bees. Alright, let's see if we can get another one. This one looks like another good one. Yep. There's a bee. Okay, we'll get it. Okay. We just gotta close it up. Okay, maybe there's one more, let's see. By doing this, by taking a few of these frames out and putting a few frames in, I'm pretty certain, no, I'm certain, we're gonna take this other box off because we don't wanna give them too much room. Yep, that one's going back in. All right, so we got two frames off this one. So are you, are you putting two frames in that you already took honey from? Yep. So in this box down here, are the frames we spun? These are the frames that we did spin, yes. And they have uh, comb and honey, so they're going to clean this up. And hopefully start putting new honey in it. And this box is going to go back to the house. And I'm going to go ahead and put some towels in here just for beetles. We're going to lay these around the edges. It seems to really help. It does help. And I'm very grateful to learn this trick from my buddy Jared at J&J &J Acres. One more hive to go. We can go inside. Okay, I got to tell you, they're going to come out of this one a lot more aggressive than what you've seen so far. So just try to relax. You're all buttoned up. You should, you should have no access. They shouldn't be able to get in anywhere. Hmm. It's very likely. Now, being in the middle of the day, they might be okay, but they also might not. This one, this one tends to be a little bit more aggressive. Well, they're not too bad out front. Once I pop this top, I think you're going to notice a lot more activity. I'm not ready. <laughs> you got to be ready. Okay, so far so good. Okay, they're sending out the guard bees. And you have your queen thing. The queen two excluder is two boxes down. There, here they come, you see? They are going to test my gloves. So I'm going to put a little smoke over the top. Oh, they're going for you. Yep. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. The other ones weren't. Nope. Just wait. No, I don't want to wait. An wait. empty frame out here. Hi, Maggie. The other night when we were out here with Bryce and I, um, 
we took four frames or three frames out of this one and they were just too aggressive we couldn't do anything with them so did you requeen this hive no this one this one still has the same queen that i put in it last year okay that is a good frame right there well there's a little bit that one's enough i think we can deal with deal with that Oh, one's on the camera. It's okay, relax. Do they smell anxiety? Yes. Are you doing both boxes or just top? Um, no, this box, I can tell from here, doesn't have a lot in it. In fact, I could take that box off because another local beekeeper who's been doing this for like 30 years said that in this area, when you get a rain, when, when the mosquito... When the mesquite trees start flowing with pollen, the bees get to work, but then when it rains, it shuts that down because it washes the pollen out of the trees. And we did get a rain last week. So uh, it's very likely that the bees are gonna be working to, to just preserve what they have for now and not carry a lot in because the mesquite, which is a very prominent food source around here in th this time of year is going away. All right, maybe we can get one more. They're being very well behaved compared to what they have done in the past. That night I brought Bryce out here they were hot. It was bad timing. Are you taking it? Yep. All right, that's five frames. Now I need to see about putting some frames in here. We're gonna drop that box down because they're not building in this box. When I put that box on, I thought there was more more nectar and pollen flow. All right, yeah, this box is still way too empty. They're not, here they come. They're getting you. Here they come. Let's walk back. Let's take some stuff back to the... To the rock. I'll mask your smell of anxiety. Oh, that's heavy. Hi, Maggie. Okay, I'm gonna get the rest of that stuff and we'll be ready to go. I'm out of here. We leave our our veils on until we drive far enough away that the bees aren't too interested in us. Today was not bad. That was actually a really pleasant experience compared to some. So we only got five frames, which is a uh, is fewer than I thought. I actually thought there was more honey out there. Uh, so all of those who I told the tall tales to, forgive me, I I messed up, <laughs> but. Um, I did get five good frames. There's still some honey in the hives, but I'm leaving it for them to finish off. The condition of the hives, they all look pretty good. That one split is still struggling a little bit. The swarm, I'm very happy about, looks very good. And uh, the three big hives, hives four, five, and six, are looking fantastic. And I'm very happy about today. Thanks for helping me, sweetie. You're welcome. What'd you think about the gloves? Well, okay, so the nitrile gloves, 
I only got hit a couple of times. I don't know if they attempted to sting or not, but I did not get stung on the hands. So, and it was very nice having the dexterity in my fingers compared to those leather gloves. So I will be trying these again until someday I prove that they're not a good idea. But for now, they seem like a decent idea. And the Velcro on the jacket helps keep it tight up around the sleeve so there's no concern about bees getting in. Except for right there. So, pretty happy so far. We'll see how it goes. Let's go get an air conditioning. Hey, sweetie, thanks for helping today. You're welcome. I had a good time. And I didn't get stung. Woohoo! If you appreciated having a camera person such as this out at the hives, give a good shout out to Mama Curbs, even though she doesn't like that name. Tell her thank you. If this is your first time joining me on the farm here on the Daddy Curbs farm, go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you can be notified of future videos. And also give me a thumbs up. That lets YouTube know that you appreciate what's going on here. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Beekeeping on the Daddy Curbs farm. I'll talk to you soon. Mmm, basil. I'm going to need some of that. And tomato. That's the main ingredient.